get on to the Instagram questions. And I've got quite a few, and some people have asked a number of questions. So I'm going to get straight into this. So, Instagram. I can't pronounce his first name, but it's something like Ro Mama or something like that. What is the story of starting your soapery? What are your favourite and least favourite tasks in your business? Okay, the story of starting my soap business, I just went from being a hobbyist to a soap maker, like, you know, a, a business soaper. Um, just like everybody else, I guess. It's just a, a hobby turned into a business. Um, what are your favourite and least favourite? Okay, my favourite tasks are making soap, pouring soap and cutting soap, 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 all the soap. And my least favourite is probably making bath salts. I don't know why I, I think it's the bagging up, because I use like these Ziploc bags, I think it's the bagging up, it just seems to take ages, it doesn't really take ages, but it feels like it takes ages, and it's just one of those jobs in which I really don't like to do, and packing orders is also <laughs> a bit boring, because I have to stand in one spot, and I end up listening to quite a lot of podcasts, and stuff like that, and just get immersed into something, because I find order packing kind of boring, so... When you're a creator and your brain is constantly going over, it's hard to just have to stand. But it's just one of the parts parts of the job that I have to do, but I don't like it. So, yeah. And then we've got Mer... Oh, I did this before. Meraki. She's not Meraki, so it's, I think it's Merake or something like that. Why did you decide to do mainly essential oil soaps? Well, I didn't. I did in the beginning just because I wanted to go all natural and, you know, have all these things. But then scent became the key factor of my business so naturally i moved into fragrances and essential oils and then she asks what inspires you and your creative process my surroundings inspire me people inspire me um movies books um when i'm on my walk in the morning depending on what i see nature especially wildlife especially and looking back through old British Victorian archives is my main inspiration that has been for this business pretty much from the beginning um, but yeah that combined with nature and then film and TV and stuff like that I'm film obsessed so actors and films and things like that I, I love all that kind of thing so those are my inspirations and she also asks, do you believe that YouTube has increased your business? Yeah, I think YouTube's a really, really good way of increasing business because it's worldwide and pretty much everybody watches YouTube videos. So yeah, I think it's a really, really good way of making your profits a bit better. She also asks, how long did it take you to see profitability in your business? I, well, you could turn a profit straight away. It's not like soap is really, really expensive to make, depending on what you're putting into your soaps. But um, I think you need to set your prices according to what you're spending. You know, if you wanted to go in and open a store straight away, then you're going to have much larger overheads. You're probably going to need bank loans and things like that to set up a shop. But um, I kind of done mine from scratch. I haven't had like loans to set up and you know buy kit and all that kind of thing because I just don't work that way. Um, so I guess I saw profit immediately, but not like you know I wasn't able to make a living out of it immediately. Then that takes a long time to build up a customer base. So not immediately, but you can make profit on the product immediately. Then you just need to sell in volume to make a living. Okay, next question is from Krishna the Krishna. What smell <laughs> what smell do you absolutely hate? And in brackets she puts not related to your products. I was thinking old Brussels sprouts myself. Okay, smells I hate are my main one I think is dirty hair. I don't like the smell of dirty hair, I don't like the smell of old body odour and sick. Those three things I just find repulsive. Oh, and also burning rubber. That's a really old one too. Okay, Nikki Plum asks, how do you tread the path between fragrances that you like and ones customers like? Do you make products that you like and trust compatible customers will find you, 
or products you know will sell to the masses. Okay, I make products what I make what I like. I make my things according to my inspirations. So I I guess the stories I tell and the inspiration behind those stories always sort of hits a nerve, not a nerve, but hits the mark with my customers. I, I kind of draw them in by telling them about the inspiration, explaining the story. So you get a feel for a product and with the feel comes the scent and it's kind of all goes hand in hand. So that's what I, I do and I do, I do do some, you know, fragrances that appeal to the masses but it could just be because I just want to try them and you know see what they're like but generally I make what I like and hopefully my customers like it as well and he also asks um, what super fat level do you prefer I use a uh, 5% on the soap calc app and then I add a further 2% with cocoa butter so my overall super fat is 7% she also says, please come visit Jamaica sometime. Our mountains are dreamy. I'm sure they are. I've been to Antigua, which I loved, and I would go back there like that. I loved it. It was one of the funniest places I've ever been to. One of the loveliest people. Just fun, fun, fun. So that was great. My sister got married there 10 years or so ago, and it was just like, it was great. We had a really good time. Okay, Let's Play Sims 4 asks, what made you decide to start soaping? <sighs> I don't know, Matt had, been, Matt had turned into a potter and I kind of wanted something to do. I'd always been quite a creative person, but um, with writing, I used to write a lot um, and keep a diary and write all my thoughts and things like that into a book. And I, it's one of my things I want to do and what so my mom keeps telling me to do is write a book. So one day I might just write a book. Um, but yeah, Matt found pottery and I think I just wanted something to do. So I got a book out of the library and started experimenting and that's... That, you know, that rest is history, that's what happened. She also says, does it ever get lonely working on your own? No, I absolutely love my own company. I like to be by myself. I'm a loner in pretty much all aspects of my life, apart from with Matt and my dog. But I, I love my own company. I don't like to be bothered too much in the day. Customers obviously come and go, and friends come and go from the shop and stuff like that, but I really, love and value my time immensely. I love being by myself, which is a very lucky thing because some people don't have that. They they need people and I, you know, I don't need people. <laughs> don't want to sound harsh, but I don't need people. I like to be by myself a lot. Okay, where are we at? So, okay. Skin Candy Inn. There's a lady based in India, a very nice lady too. I wanted to know how you make your essential oil blends. They seem wonderfully complex. Mine are usually a base note with a citrus complementary note, and that's about as much as I can handle. Okay, I make my blends, again, based on... So I'm looking for a scent, so when I'm trying to create a new blend, I'm looking to blend things together to create an overall feeling and a scent. So I usually have all my essential oils out on the floor in front of me. Not all of them, but the ones I want to like try and put together for a blend. And then I just sort of hold a collection of them together that I think will work and sort of just smell and if one doesn't work or it's throwing the whole blend off I'll take that one out try something else or just leave it out altogether that is what I do so I also this is a really good piece of advice if I do say so myself I have a spreadsheet that I set up so when you okay so start at the beginning essential oil smell like like they like they are you know they just smell you know what an essential oil will smell like because it is the actual plant thing that it smells like um but fragrance oils can quite often be misleading because a manufacturer or a supplier will give you their scent notes and it's not always the case that they smell like what they are saying they smell like so i have made my own spreadsheet where i will buy in my fragrances and i will um smell them and then make my own note of all the things that I think that oil smells like so it could be anything anything but what I smell from it is what I write on my notes so when I'm looking for a particular scent to put in a blend I've got all these notes and generally I'll pack them into genres so there'll be green scents floral scents bakery scents you know sweet candy shop scents all the different genres and then my notes so I have a column of notes 
where I just put what I think each one smells like. So I've always got something to refer to if I'm looking for a particular scent. So that's a really good way of doing blends, is to... You tell yourself what they smell like, don't let them tell you what they smell like, because everybody's sense of smell is different. So, yeah, that's how I do it. The ASMR unboxing. Hello, Jen. She's one of my favourite ASMR artists. And she asks, what has your career path been like from school to soap? You would do this to me, wouldn't you? Good grief. School to soap. Okay, so beginnings, I worked in an arcade where I gave out change from behind a counter. It's probably really uh, miserable at doing that. And actually, I wasn't. I had a good laugh. I used to spend all my days in the arcade. I'm a kid born in the 70s and growing up in the 80s. So the arcade was... My, it was just everything to me. So the slot machines and the games, I used to play Bubble Bobble and Pac-Man and I worked in there. I also worked in cafes on Saturdays to get my hairspray money <laughs> for my beautiful locks. And I did pea picking, rhubarb cutting, hoeing, not that kind of hoeing, I mean hoeing with a hoe on the land because we live in a market gardening area. So loads of kids used to work the land and pick peas and stuff like that. And then I worked in the factories. I worked in a food factory which was disgusting. And the worst thing I've ever done was like a meat factory where they made pies, pork pies and stuff like that. And it stinks and it was disgusting. And we had to wear hair nets. It was just the foulest job. And I hated it and I got the sack and it was the best day of my life. And then I moved on to another factory which made uh, manufactured uh, glasses cases and I was a printer in a big warehouse by myself in my own little room which I loved this job, I loved it and I used to hang out with all the men and have a real good laugh and I used to make the, uh, the printing plates in a dark room like a camera dark room and yeah I'd spend days printing on big machines on the top of the glasses cases so we used to make them for companies like Oakley and Paul Smith and all kinds of different designer ones and you know all, all sorts so until China took over the market and the factory just closed down after that I worked at a plant nursery for a guy called Bob Brown at Cotswold Garden Flowers and I loved it and he was probably the best boss I ever had who taught me a hell of a lot about how to run a mail order business and then after that I did a credit control job while I was developing the soap business. So I was a credit controller with my best friend Hannah and we used to just sit there and talk all day. <laughs> and I'd ask people to pay their bill and that was that. And then I'm now I'm a soap maker. So I've done a few different bits and pieces. Okay, 12 minutes in. Okay, thank you Jen. Addictive Apothecary asks, do you find that essential oils fade faster than fragrance oil or is it the total opposite? I think they do. I think some will stick a bit longer than others. So things like um, Elang Elang and Patchouli tend to stick around for a bit longer. Um, but generally they're flighty little buggers. So yeah, I think fragrance oils stick for quite a lot longer than essential oils, apart from the, ba the heavy base notes. Uh, what percentage per pound do you recommend to use in a formula? I can't say because, again, my assessment determines what I'm allowed to use. So I just have to go by my assessment. Sense and Nonsense asks, how did you get into soaping? Like I said, like Matt was into pottery and I just wanted something to do and I got a book. So yeah, that was that. And then she asks, what one or two best books and or DVDs and or distance learning courses would you recommend for learning essential oil blending? Okay, the first, I've got the book here. I kept it to the side for, to show you. This one I've mentioned before in my videos. Get this. The Essential Oil, the Encyclopedia of Essential Oils by Julia Lawless. This will help you. It's invaluable. So until you get your own nose and you've got confidence in yourself, that's a really great book to start with. I wouldn't recommend DVDs. I wouldn't recommend distance learning. They can't teach you anything. You, you need to buy your essential oils. Buy small. Smell them. See which ones you like. See which ones go together your brain and your nose will tell you so that's but other than that book but you're you know you can tell yourself what smells good together and what doesn't so just use your nose that's what i'd say um then she says you mentioned in a video sla i think she means sls affecting your health have you any advice about some other things to avoid or protect against when using 
I would suggest always wearing a mask, always protect yourself with lye fumes and um, powdered surfactant fumes and things like that. And she also says from both the craft and business point of view, if you had one do and one don't, what would they be? Uh, one do, I would say stick to yourself. Keep your nose down and keep focused on what it is that you want out of your own business. Don't listen to crowds. Don't hang out on Facebook groups because they're great, you know, share comments, get involved, that kind of thing. But for your business, you stick to your guns and keep your head down because you will not have any success hanging out in a crowd. You, you, you know, you're the individual that's doing this thing. So I would say that's one of the best pieces of advice I could offer you. And one don't. <coughs> Again, don't hang out in crowds. Um, don't spend tons of money on ingredients like we all did. Uh, I don't really know. It's like, just follow your own path, you know. Follow your own path and stay true to yourself. Don't copy is another one. Don't copy anybody. Just uh, focus on what it is that you want your brand to be. And go with it and keep your head down. Keep your gob shut and your head down. Okay, she also says, thank you for sharing your craft. I love watching your videos and I've picked up lots of useful tips. Thank you for just being you in the video. So refreshing. Thank you very much. Royal Appleberry, hey. Why are you so gosh darn awesome? I don't know. I think God made me that way. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I'm awesome at all. I'm completely like, oh, I don't like compliments. I'm sorry. <laughs> As British people can't handle compliments very well at all. Uh... Okay, Casper, Casper, Casper the Gardson. Do you allow all of your soaps to go through gel phase? Uh, no, I just let them do what they do. Do you discount the water in all of your batches of soap? No, most of the time I do, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. What temp do you mix all the ingredients? Room temperature. And do you master batch your oils and light solution? No. If I'm making three batches of soap in, in one go, then I'll um, melt all my solid oils together and I will do all my separate jugs of lye, but I won't make master batches to use, you know, the following day or whatever. I just do it as I, as I do it. That works best for me. I've tried master batching and it didn't work very well for me. Okay, last question. Raw Beauty Secrets, do you super fat separately, as in do you add in the super fat oils at Trace? Which do you prefer? I put all mine in the pot together. What was your first ever soap recipe and where did you find the recipe? I think my first recipe, I, I don't know, I think I was just, I don't really have a first recipe. Um, I just tried stuff out of a book. I had this book out of the library called The Handmade Soap Book and I used recipes out of there. And then I settled on my final recipe that I've got now, which I created myself. What is the soap bar quality of your soaps going from the Soap Calc, soap calc website? Uh, okay. I'll just give you a little hint because I'm not going to tell you everything about my soap recipe. <laughs> it doesn't, you know, what you, everybody has their own. But the on this sheet, this is a soap calc sheet, and on the bottom here you've got an INS, and you want to make sure that your recipe comes to around 160, and that will create a decent bar of soap, which is creamy, cleansing. I'm not going to say moisturising because a bar of soap is made to clean your skin. I, I don't get it when people say they moisturise. A moisturiser moisturises. A soap just cleans and can be gentle or, you know, not gentle, but not moisturising. But, um, yeah, that's... Uh, aim for 160 is what I was always told, and what seems to work for me is 160. So, yeah, that's it. And that's the end of the questions. We're at 19 minutes. I think we're done. So I'm going to turn this off and get it uploaded. Ta-ta!